everybody. This is the Insurance Disruptors podcast. My name is Nate Jones. I'm a co-host here, and we also have Abe Busick, who's also a co-host. And today we are talking about slumps and what we're here to help agents do is this podcast is for agents who want to be disruptors in the insurance industry, disruptors in a good way. But sometimes we go through slumps. Sometimes we go through periods of low sales. And that's what we're talking about today. Abe, if you want to introduce slow weeks versus long slow weeks, can you explain that real quick? Yeah. And I love this topic that we're talking about, Nate, because it's so applicable if you're brand new or if you've been in the industry for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, because bad weeks and slumps, they're going to happen. Um, If you haven't been through one, I promise you one is coming. And if you haven't, you know, if you just got out of one, you know what we're talking about here. So let's kick it off. I'll talk about it. Let's just define, um, Nate, what's a bad week versus an actual a slump that we should be concerned about and starting to make some changes. So in the insurance industry, if you've been in here for any length of time at all, you know the weeks, they ebb and flow. They're high and they're low, right? Some weeks may be really good and you may have a week that's really bad. What we don't want to do with this podcast, Nate, is confuse people who might be in a bad week into thinking that they're in a slump, or we don't want somebody who's in a slump to keep telling themselves that it's just a bad week and then not making any changes, right? So we want to define the two. So a slow week, that's just where, you know, up until this point, everything's been going well, you're hitting your numbers, uh, but for whatever reason, you know, you had a bad week, it wasn't there, it didn't come together. Okay, fine. When we talk about a slump, we're talking about when we're looking at four weeks of rolling data. So four weeks where your revenue that you've produced over those four weeks is lower than normal, and you're starting to see a pattern and a trend to where instead of it coming together, you're finding more often than not, um, your weeks are ending bad. You can't seem to sell a policy to save your life or bind a policy to save your life. That's what we're talking about when we say a slump. So We want to talk about how to respond to both, though. So we're going to start off with talking about how do you respond when you have a bad week? Nate, you have, you know, this you had some good points on this. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how to respond to a bad week. Yeah, bad weeks. And I just had one of these two weeks ago. And I actually talked with Abe about it. We were talking about something else. I got brought up and Abe told me, he said, hey, where are you at for the year? Where are you at for the quarter? And I was like, well, we've hit our goal the last 15 to 16 weeks. We're way ahead for our annual goal, way ahead for our quarter. And, you know, and Abe was like, well, why are you, why are you freaking out, man? Like you're doing okay, you know? So it's like, you're just having a bad week. And I think that kind of goes into the first point is zoom out and look at your, where you're at look at your quarter, look at your annual goal. Because when I did that, I stopped hitting the panic button. I stopped kind of having a small little freak out. And I was like, oh, you know, if if you're killing it for 15 weeks, you might have a week where you're not going to do so hot. And then last week we had a great week, one of our largest weeks. And I was like, why was I even, you know, emotionally on the roller coaster, even though I was trying not to be, it's easy for us and I'm the first person to do it. In a great week, I'm, you know, high as high. And in a low week, I'm like, what's going to happen, you know? So we all go through that. And I, the biggest thing is zoom out, look at the bigger picture, make sure that you're actually kind of, you know, you're doing okay. It's okay. Relax. You're going to have next week, the following week, it's going to be okay. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing. And number two, the second thing is control your controllables. And which that means is control your attitude. My attitude wasn't negative, but my attitude was, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? So if I can control that and say, hey, I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to stay motivated. I'm going to continue looking forward and doing what I'm doing. And looking forward means, hey, I'm going to continue to do the activity I'm doing because that's something I can control. I can control the calls I make. I can control my different flows of networking and different activities that I do that breed to sales. I can control that. So I need to continue to do that. I also need to look at my pipeline. Why did my pipeline kind of dry up this week? Is it a vacation week? Because two weeks ago, I didn't even know that a bunch of kids were on fall break because I don't have any kids. And that's why it was a slow week. So, you know, making sure that your pipeline, why did it dry up that week? you know, maybe you closed a big sale a month ago and that's why it's dried up. That's not a bad thing. The next week you should be okay. 
So number three, going into the next thing, don't panic. Like I just said, don't panic. Don't change the playbook. Continue to move forward and reset. And the last thing here, number four, is enjoy your life. And this time, Abe told me, he said, hey, maybe God's giving you a little time to reset, relax, and maybe take a little time and, and go walk or go work out or, you know, reset, read a book. A lot of times we're so busy, we don't get a kind of get that creativity time. So when you get those slow weeks, take some time, re reevaluate and come back the next week where you can hit it hard. So four things I have, number one, zoom out, look where you're at. Number two, control your controllables. Number three, don't panic. Don't throw out the playbook. Number four, enjoy your life. Yeah. And I think when we talk about enjoying life, Nate, we want to want to remind ourselves that energy is finite, even though we all think we can keep going like the Energizer Bunny. We can't. Right. We're all human beings. And as our energy tank depletes and our energy level gets lower, that's going to carry over into our appointments with our clients. <clears throat> right. Because when I'm not my best self and I don't have the energy to be my best self, then I'm not in the best position to be the best person to help that client. So sometimes it's totally appropriate that when life or God hands you a slow week to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to just relax and enjoy the week. If I'm hitting all my goals up to this point, you know, if everything's going well in the business and it's just a bad week, I'm not going to sit around and stress out about it. I'm not going to overanalyze it. I'm going to take that as a time to either go spend time with my family, go do something I love, and restock and re-energize myself. So next week when Monday rolls around, I am my best self and ready to help my clients um, and get the ball back rolling again. So yeah, well, let's, let's talk about good. Sorry, you have something else? No, I think that, that you hit it right there. And I'm, I, yeah, that's the short week and let's move forward to the, the long-term slumps here. Yeah. So now let's talk about though, it's not just a bad week, right, Nate? Like you're going on three, four, five weeks in a row where you're banging your head against the wall. Like I said earlier, it seems like you can't bind or sell a policy to save your life. What do you do in that moment when it feels like your business is spiraling out of control and you're starting to wonder and question yourself, did I make the right decision by getting into this industry? Have I forgotten you know, how to sell insurance? Have I done it for four and a half years? And all of a sudden now I have like insurance amnesia and can't remember how to uh, sell a policy. <clears throat> no, you know what you're doing. So let's talk about how do you respond to a slump so you can get momentum back and get recourse corrected and get on the right track. Number one, Nate, I think it's really important for myself when I'm in a slump to look at, have I changed my activity level or processes? So, you know, on the life insurance side, activity level looks like purchasing leads, making dials, and setting up appointments. Have I kept all three of those levels where they should be, or have I started to let one of those slip? Meaning maybe I'm not purchasing as many leads as what I used to, because all of a sudden I think I'm better than what I am. That'll put you in a slump. Maybe I'm not making as many dials as what I used to be, because I think I'm better than what I am. That'll put you in a slump. Maybe I've let myself off the hook when it comes to how many appointments I'm running a week, right? You know, my number for myself is I try to run around 20 appointments a week for insurance. And I know that if I go less than that, it's going to be a bad week. Now I can increase that if I want to, but I can never go lower than 15 to 20 appointments because if I do, I'm putting myself into a self-induced slump because of that. So check your activity level and processes. Have you changed anything? Um, if you have, get back to doing high activity, get back to doing what you were doing. And unfortunately, momentum is one of those things. If you lost it, you're going to have to do more than what you were doing to get it back temporarily, right? So if I'm normally running 20 appointments a week and I allow myself to let myself off the hook and now I'm slipping, um, probably for a week or two, I need to do 25 appointments a week, right? If I'm used to doing, you know, 300 dials a week and I've lost momentum because I let myself off the hook to get momentum back, I probably need to do 400 to 500 dials for a couple of weeks to get momentum back in my favor. You know, when you talk about a slump, we're talking about, <clears throat> let's say a slump, Let's just talk, let's use baseball as an analogy, right? Let's say um, a hitter is going to go up and it's just predestined that he's going to be in a slump for his next 30 at-bats, right? He can either go up and get 30 at-bats all in one week, or he can mope around and drag that out for three or four months. Mm -hmm. which, which baseball player is going to be more successful? 
right? The one who's in the batting cage is saying, you know what, if I got to get a thousand pitches to get out of this slump practice, let's get them all in one day. I'll need to drag that out for a week or two. It's the same way in insurance. If you're in a slump, start compressing your activity, start getting more done in a day to make sure you work through that slump quicker because being in a slump is inevitable. Turning it into a bad month or a bad quarter, that's totally up to you and your response and your activity level uh, when it comes to insurance. Um, number three, so, or I'm sorry, number two, you've checked your activity level and your processes. What do you want to do next? You want to make sure that you haven't overcomplicated the sales process when you're meeting with the client. Keep them simple. Um, clients are reaching out to us because they don't want us to complicate and confuse them. They don't care how the policy works. They don't care about all the ins and outs of the policy. They just want to know, is it going to do what you say it's going to do when it comes time for the policy to do that, right? A lot of times for myself, Nate, when I'm in a slump, I can look back and say, you know what? For some reason, I started to try to get too fancy in my presentation and I changed this. Or, you know, I got lazy in my presentation and I stopped doing this. You know, and none of it was intentional. It just creeps in over time. So how can you figure that out? A good practice I've always taught, done for myself and I've coached with other agents is record yourself. Sit down, do a couple presentations in front of Zoom or at least on a voice recorder. Listen to what you're saying and how you're saying it. Listen to your speed, your tone, the verbiage you're using, because I promise you 100% of the time, you are going to be surprised at what comes out of your mouth <laughs> and how it comes out of your mouth when you listen to yourself back and just getting back to keeping everything simple. When, you, when you're recording yourself and cutting out the nonsense and the fluff um, will go a long way in getting you out of a slump. Number three, um, so now your activity level is high. You've checked your processes in your client appointment. Now you want to, what, you're still you're struggling to get the sale. You're struggling to get the momentum back. At this point in time, most of the time, at least for myself, Nate, my confidence level was probably pretty low, right? Like I'm starting to really question, okay, am I the best agent? to help this client. I no longer believe that I am, or can I do this? Did I get into the wrong industry? Have I made a mistake in stepping out into this? And I, my mind starts to play tricks on me, right? It'll start to say, man, Abraham, you've, only, you've gotten lucky for four and a half years, right? Which we know that's not true, but in that moment, your mind will start to play that game. We say, how do you counteract that? Man, Nate, the best thing I've found to do is to go back and reflect on previous sales and previous clients that I've helped. And just really spend time focusing on those saying, okay, I remember Mr. Jones over here. Um, I was able to help him. He had all these health conditions or all these problems. And I was able to help them still get a policy, right? I was able to help over here, Susie. Um, you know, she had a, a budget issue and all these other concerns. And yet we were still able to help her. I know what I'm doing. And it's the same thing for you. If you're in a slump, you know what you're doing. Don't let your mind lie to you. So go back, look at your previous sales, get your confidence back, start to reflect back on previous times where you've done well, what you were doing, right? What you were doing that worked back then and just get back to doing it, right? Get back to the simple things, get your mojo back, get your confidence back. Number four, um, another thing you can do that's really important is get another pair of eyes on the situation, Right. Get another insurance professional, whether it's somebody in your company, whether it's somebody you're friends with, but somebody you trust who's, who knows insurance to get their eyes on your slump. Why do you do that? Because sometimes you're so close to the problem that you can't see the simple solution, right? It's never usually anything major that we have to fix. It's always something minor, but when you're in the thick of battle, you don't see the minor tweaks to be made to get back to, to, to the success you were used to, to having in the industry. So... Um, you know, whether that's, like I said, somebody in your company, a friend, we're always here at the Insurance Disruptors to help. You can message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, where we'll spend time, you know, putting another pair of eyes on the situation. But that's so important. I can't tell you how many times a third pair of eyes in my insurance career has kept me in the business, right? I have a brother who's been in insurance longer than I have getting his eyes on the situation. He's helped me so many times um, at just getting back on track. Other people, you know, that I've looked up to, I have you, Nate, that we can reach out and just say, hey, man, do you have a minute? Let me talk to you about what's going on. And you'd be surprised those simple things that somebody else is like, oh, well, why are you doing that? And you're like, I don't know. I didn't realize I was doing that, <laughs> right? Get that other pair of eyes on the situation to help you figure out how to get back. And then lastly, and Nate, I do want you to add some to this because we had a pretty cool story, just a personal story for you that we were talking about with this, but 
get back to having fun, right? The insurance industry is a fun career. You get to meet all kinds of crazy people, fun people, um, hear crazy stories, hear their backgrounds, hear their, their life up to this point. Like, that's cool. We get paid very well to literally go out <clears throat> and listen to all these people's stories, right? To go out and have fun with these clients and help them get a problem, you know, solved that they have. Don't forget that. Like, get back to just having fun. Be your authentic self because I know when you're in a slump, you're trying harder and harder and harder and harder and you're trying to force it and make it happen. And it just, that's never going to get you out of the slump. Sometimes you got to just throw away the last five weeks, forget about them and say, you know what? I don't care what's going to happen in this next appointment. I don't care about the results. I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to have fun with this client. And if they, if they write a policy or if they bind a policy, cool. If they don't, I don't care. I'm still going to have fun. And when all of a sudden you're back to that energy level of just having fun, that attracts clients to you, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they want to work with the person who's confident, who's having fun, who's relaxed, who's their authentic self. They don't want to work with the person who's coming in and trying to be so smooth and so polished sometimes that you forget that we're all human, right? Um, so that's the things I have for how to get out of a slump. But Nate, you have a story on that about getting back to having fun and it's not insurance related, but somehow it's so applicable to insurance at the same time. I'd love for you to share that for our listeners here. Yeah. And I think it, it really goes hand in hand. And I think this is it, a lot of times in our life, we, when we tighten our grip and we don't have fun, we're usually not performing at our highest level. And I was, I play slow pitch softball. It's nothing to brag about. It's a bunch of old guys, you know, reliving the glory days pretty much. And I went through the last kind of couple weeks, just like a slump you know, before then I was just killing the ball, just crushing it. And then I go through a slump where I'm grounding out, fouling it. And I'm like, what am I doing? I, I can hit home runs. I can, I I'm the four hitter, you know, like I can hit the ball. And then some guy who's been playing for 30 years, who continues to play. And he came up to me and he said something really simple. He's like, Nate, just watch the ball. Just stop thinking about all these different things. Like I can tell you're so tight up there. Just loosen up, watch the ball and you'll hit it far. And I did it. And now I'm kind of out of that slump and I have to always remind myself, Hey, loosen up. And I think another point that you said is, you know, I think what's really important is having a mentor, having somebody to kind of talk with when I was early on in my career, a young insurance person, and I worked at a large insurance agency and I was meeting with these business owners and I was kind of like a deer in headlights when I would go into these meetings. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a business owner who's running a business that multi-million dollar business, like I'm so nervous. And, um, you know, I, I was open about that. And I, and I said to my mentor, like, man, I just feel like it's these guys, they're like, you know, they're so big and all these things. And he's like, Nate, don't ever forget that you deserve to be in the room that you deserve that seat at the table and be confident, be bold, be who you are. And that person, they're just another human being. They're just another person. It doesn't matter what they've accomplished, different things. People want to connect with you because you're the only you out there. So I kept saying that to myself. I'm like, I deserve to be in this room. I deserve to be in this room. And I started being more confident. I started being more my myself. I started laughing, joking around in a meeting and I started realizing like, oh, I'm connecting with these people and to just loosen up and be yourself. And it took somebody who didn't tell me, hey, you need to say this in a meeting. You need to say that. It took a guy just saying like, hey, you deserve to be in a room. And it completely flipped what I was doing. So a lot of times we always want to find, we search books, we search all these things to find these technical like changes that we can make and really we have the ability to do great. Sometimes we just need a little bit of confidence to be who we already are. Yeah. And if I were to add another point after that, it'd be fine. Surround yourself with people who speak life into you. Yeah. Because that's exactly what that mentor did. And man, that's just great life advice, mm -hmm. right? Um, not just insurance. So I'll recap here again, how to get out of a slump. Number one, keep your activity level high and make sure you haven't changed your practices or your focus. Number two, Make sure you're keeping your client meetings simple. If you've started to overcomplicate them with presentations and slides and handouts, scrap all that, at least temporarily. Get back to when you were brand new and you didn't know a thing about insurance. You were just going in there and doing what you were told to do. You'll be surprised. That'll go a long way. Number three, 
Get your confidence back by reflecting on your previous successes and clients you've helped. Number four, get another pair of eyes on the situation. And number five, get back to having fun. So Nate, I love this topic that we did. I hope it's been a help to a lot of people, but why don't you close us out here, man? Yeah. And if you enjoyed this, if you want to have, uh, you know, thinking about mentors, if you want to talk with us, we, we're always open. It doesn't cost you a penny. We're here to help you out. We're here to, you know, make the insurance industry a better industry for everybody. And like, comment, subscribe. It really helps us out. We want to know if people are enjoying this. And if there's anything that you think we want to talk about or that any suggestions that we're always open to creating content that people are needing help with. And sometimes it's, we need to know that from you guys. So have a great week, take care and see y'all later.